So I'll be talking today about, um, I'm sorry, yeah, just going back. Access to quality assured generic medicines for treating HIV and viral hepatitis in low and middle income countries with particular focus on Eastern Europe and Central Asia. So why do we have to talk about it at all? Uh, well, Sergei just mentioned that uh, access to affordable medicines is still a big issue in uh, the region and uh, beyond. And um, access to generic medicines uh, is becoming more and more important in, in light of so many countries transitioning from uh, uh, donor funding to domestic funding and scarce financial resources of countries. So let's uh, try to understand what impact patents and licenses have on affordability of medicines. In other words, why are the prices high? So medicines for treating HIV and viral hepatitis, as many other, same as many other medicines, are patented, which means that um, other manufacturers are prevented from manufacturing, selling, and importing a patented product for the period of 20 years which means that there is only one single supplier on the market, which in its turn means that there is no competition of prices and the prices remain high. And here you can see some key medicines for treating HIV and you can see when the patents expire for them. So for example, the patent for Dolutegravir expires in 2026 and for Lopinavir Ritonavir 2026, in some countries 24, and for TAF 21 and 20, uh, uh, 2032. So um, how is it possible to reduce prices and is it possible at all? So Sergey mentioned already a few strategies including direct price negotiations, compulsory licenses, patent opposition. So, and uh, we can see that significant price reductions are observed in those countries where generics are able to enter the market. But how is it possible at all if patents are in place? So it is possible when patent holders grant a voluntary or grant licenses to generic manufacturers. License is an agreement between a patent holder, originator, and generic manufacturer or organization or institution providing rights to make, use, sell, and import a patented product in certain territory under agreed terms and conditions. And licenses negotiated by MPP, which is Medicines Patent Pool, or bilaterally enabled many developing countries to procure more affordable gen generic treatments. And here you can see that licenses exist for, uh, for the mentioned uh, HIV medicines, which I mentioned in the previous slide. So for countries which are included into the licensed territory, there is no need to wait until a patent expires. They can already uh, procure uh, quality assured generic medicines. And when I say quality assured, I mean WHO pre-qualified or approved by other stringent regulatory authorities such as, for example, FDA. So what is, uh, who we are, like what is the medicines patent pool? Uh, it is a UN-backed public health organization established uh, in 2010 to increase access to new HIV medicines in low and middle income countries and facilitate development of new combinations such as, for example, the TLD combination mentioned already by Sergey, and new form formulations uh, such as, for example, pediatric formulations. We, ap we operate through concluding voluntary license agreement with originator manufacturers and uh, MPP is endorsed by WHO, UN and other stakeholders as a first and uh, 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 public health oriented uh, mechanism to improve access to medicines in developing countries. And in 2016 we expanded our mandate to start working in hepatitis and TB and now we are, uh, started working in other areas for other essential medicines uh, such as those which are on the WHO list of essential medicines. So this is very briefly how we work. Medicines patent pool is in the middle between the patent holder and generic manufacturer. So we negotiate licenses from originator or from patent holders. And then we sub-license or we give license to as many generic manufacturers as possible to enable them to manufacture standalone medicines, formulations and combinations and royalties go back from uh, generic manufacturers to patent holders. In many cases, there are no royalties at all. For example, for all pediatric medicines and formulations, for uh, the Cladosphere license, GP, and we'll talk later about that. And actually, that's how medicines uh, get to people in low and middle income countries. 
So this is a very busy slide. We just need to understand um, that most of low and middle income countries are covered by the MPP licenses, which means that they can procure already uh, quality assured, which means WHO pre-qualified medicines from our licensees. Um, and in the column, uh, in the right column, you can see that uh, the number of countries which can procure those medicines. Plus means that uh, countries which are not in the licenses, but when there is no patent infringement, uh, can also procure it. We can talk about it also later. So, and coming closer to the point, uh, so which countries in Eastern Europe, Central Asia, uh, can uh, procure medicines uh, from generic manufacturers of the MPP? So you can read them, I won't be reading them uh, here, but you can also see that most of them are included in the licenses for TDF, TDF3TC, TDF3TC, efferents. Then for PrEP medicines, for medicines for, for PrEP and dolutegravir and the TLD combination. So these countries are, this is a list of countries which are included in the license for atazanavir, which is used as a second line treatment. And uh, also most of the countries of the region are included in the licenses for the new IRVs, which are TAF and Bictagravir. So they, they will be able to procure generic medicines as well. So, and for those of you working in, uh, in pediatrics, so here are the countries that can have access to pediatric generic medicines. Um, talking about uh, medicines for treating HBV and HCV, so you can see uh, that patent, uh, patents for expire also quite late. For example, the patent for the Clatasphere expires in 2030 for Sofosbuvir and Sofosbuvir regimens uh, 2034 35 which means also that countries should have to wait probably until the patent expires before they are able to procure generic medicines. But the good news is there, that there are licenses, uh, either uh, concluded by MPP or issued bilaterally, as in case of Gilead license. Um, so, and those licenses already enabled many developing countries, actually most of them, to procure uh, more affordable generic treatments. So again, talking about the region. So here, are, uh, here is a list of countries which are included in the Declatosphere uh, uh, license. Only four of them, Azerbaijan, Georgia, Turkmenistan, Uzbekistan. But those countries in which there is no patent, uh, you can see the second group of countries, starting from Armenia and finishing with Tajikistan, they can also procure the medicines because uh, uh, there is no patent, um, although they are not included in the license. And Russia, unfortunately, is not in the license and there is a patent, which means uh, Russia can not only procure if a compulsory license is, is issued, as Sergey mentioned. <clears throat> Um, talking about Gilead license, uh, uh, I guess six countries are included in the license and they are already procuring the Sofosbuvir and Sofosbuvir Ladipasphere, Sofosbuvir Valpatasphere and Voxilaprevir. Again, Russia cannot procure because Russia is not in the license and Russia is, and the medicine is patented. <clears throat> And there is another opportunity for low and middle income countries, uh, as you know, the new regimen, Glacapravir like Pibrentasphere. Uh, and MPP has also a license agreement for GP. Uh, agreement covers 95 countries and four territories. And so far, only two countries in the region uh, are covered by the agreement, Georgia and Turkmenistan. And we are looking now into the possibility of expanding the, the agreement to cover more countries from the region and beyond as well. So, talking about hepatitis, uh, treatment for hepatitis B, currently, as you know, TDF and TAF are used. The good news is that patent for TAF expired, so it can be procured for um, hepatitis B programs if they are in place. But the bad news is that in most countries, hepatitis B is not included in national programs and is not procured by the government, which means that patients have to, care, uh, to pay out of pocket and the prices remain high, but the price of 32 US dollars per year per patient, the HIV price should be the same for hepatitis B procurements as well. And talking about TAF, uh, the good news again is that TAF is included in the MPP license and uh, all countries which are included in the MPP Gilead license should be able to procure it and some countries actually are already procuring. Um, so some, here are some findings from our work that probably would be interesting for you and also applicable to your work. So prices remain low where there are national programs in place, like for treating HIV and hepatitis, and procurements are happening, which means that the demand is pretty high. 
then there are several manufacturers which are registered and those manufacturers are competing uh, in the market and that's how it is possible for the government to reduce the prices even more. And prices remain high where there are no, no national programs uh, which results in lack of testing or no testing at all and as a result no low demand where no procurements or limited procurements are ha happening and low demand stops the prices falling so and generic prices are really highly dependent on, on large volumes the bigger the volume the lower the prices you know so and as a rule when there are no national programs there is only one single manufacturer registered on the market and uh, the manufacturer can control the price, of course, on the market, and the prices remain high. And uh, uh, medicines are available only in private markets, so people have to pay out of pocket if, it, if they can pay at all. And suboptimal procurement practices, unfortunately, also t uh, exist. And some key messages for, for us to take home, probably, so that access to affordable quality assured medicines is the key to achieve the 1990-90 goals for HIV and the elimination goals, and consequently the universal health coverage. And medicines uh, prices uh, dro has dropped considerably in many countries. For example, the price for TLD, as you know, is $75 per patient per year. For Daxof combination, less than $100 in many countries. And uh, access oriented or public health oriented licenses through MPP for HIV and uh, hepatitis medicines have contributed a lot to price drops. And uh, again, the good news is that many Eastern European and Central Asian countries are included in the licenses and therefore should be able to procure more affordable quality assured generic medicines and many of them already procuring. However, there are exceptions like Russia and we can also talk later about that. Thank you for your attention.